Hello people, how's it going? It's your boy Bo, back on another track. It has been almost a full month since we have looked at the OG. Who is the OG, you may ask? Well, you're, you're definitely not asking because you read the title, you know what we're doing. I wanted to watch some odd ones out today. There's still so many classics from this dude that I haven't seen. And it's not like I'm gonna watch every single odd ones out video ever, but when we're still looking at 87 million views and we haven't seen it, it's like, what am I doing? What are we doing here? And so I have picked out a few videos that I really want to watch today. Boying Clouds! Growing up without cable! This is it's one of my favorite channels in the world, and I haven't watched it in like a month. I've gone through so much stress over the last month. You know what? I owe it to myself. We need to have another James Sesh. So people, let's look at some classics today. Y'all know what it is. Robert IDK, The Odd Ones Out theme song. Sometimes I feel like the odd one out. No one knows what I'm talking about. So I just go and take a trip to Subway. Oh. Some things may keep me awake at night. What gains my awful roommates and life. So I'll recline and go online. The odd one's out, I'll laugh a million times. Boying clothes! Sorry, I promise I will not be that annoying for the rest of the video. I guess everyone buys clothes. Everyone on the planet buys clothes. Unless you're the clothes genie and clothes appear out of thin air for you. But I've never seen a comedy animation about buying clothes. And so now's the time to change that. People, let's hit it. Three, two, one. Hey man, have you ever noticed that we wear the exact same clothes every day? We don't... We don't wear any clothes. What if we're both just a cartoon character, and that's why our clothing's the same? Whoa. That's impossible. Cartoon characters' mouths move. We just open our mouths and words start coming out. <gasps> hey, guys. Did you see my brand new Rolex? Whoa. <laughs> Are you jealous? Doesn't your phone tell the time? Maybe he never noticed that his phone has a clock in it. <laughs> No one buys a Rolex to tell the time. Bro, okay, James, you, you throw in shots already. You're already throwing shots. Listen, if a fella wants to wear a watch, it's, it's called fashion, look it up. Listen, I don't have a Rolex. Here's what we'll do. If I get to a point where I have over a hundred videos with a million views, then maybe I'll buy a Rolex. But right now I have no desire. But fam, it's the fashion, it's okay. This is an actual like utility watch. Like I look at my heart rate and steps and I, keep track of my actual health and, you know, illness, uh, uh, recovery. But man, if a homie wants to just pull up with a Rolly, that's okay. That's okay. No one buys a Rolex to tell the time. I can't even read this. People buy Rolexes to indirectly tell everyone how much money we can throw away on useless objects. Hey, look what my watch can do. Ring, ring. Hello? You'll never believe what Brian just bought. Oh what did he buy? Oh my gosh. A watch. Really? <laughs> James! What a nerd. Oh, Brian. Talking smack! Don't you think we're already addicted enough to our phones? I actually am happy when I can check the time using my watch and I don't have to look at my phone. Because it just pulls you into its world so quickly. I'm the kind of person who doesn't really care about my outward appearance. A lot of times in high school, we talk about having a healthy self-image of ourselves, and teachers would say stuff like, Don't listen to the people who call you ugly. <laughs> You're beautiful. And all I could think was, there's people saying I'm ugly? For the most part, I haven't really tried to even learn anything about fashion. Most of the time when I get dressed in the morning, I wear just whatever's the cleanest. Like, I don't even know my pants size because I wear basketball shorts all the time. <laughs> I think... I'm a medium. My parents <laughs> taught me the value of hard work by making me pay for all my clothes. And I am 100% wow. on board with that parenting technique. I think even the super, super rich parents should still make their kids buy their own clothes. Really? <laughs> but really? I understand, like, once you turn 18. Well, no wonder you don't care about <laughs> the clothes you wear. Having to buy your own clothes? Bro, where did you get money as a six-year-old? How is six-year-old James getting cash? Am I missing something, James? I guess allowance is a thing, but jeez. Can you imagine doing chores all week so that you can afford a white t-shirt so that you don't have to go naked through the world? Oh my gosh. Because if you just buy your child anything they want, then they're going to turn into a-holes who just expect everything without having to work hard. Those are the types of kids who grow up to flex all their money on people and who leave their basketball cards all over the cramped dorm. And also, buying your own clothes makes you think harder about what you're going to spend your precious dollars on. You don't want to waste your money, so you have to pick clothes you really like. 
Except my mom told me I couldn't buy anything with skulls on them. She said they were too edgy. And you know what? Fair enough, mom. Looking back, I'm glad I skipped that emo edgy phase. But why didn't you let me express my true self, mom? Thank you for not letting me do that. James! <laughs> uh, I feel personally attacked right now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Having an emo phase can also build character. I honestly think, this may sound super weird, I honestly think some of the best looking people are people who like had an emo phase and then grew past it and like took all of the knowledge with them. <laughs> you know? People who like maybe when they were younger made some questionable decisions, but in the process did learn how to like how they wanted to portray themselves. I think that's important But also not buying your own clothes as a child doesn't make you a rich Lamborghini flexing boy But James I'm still with you. We're good. We're good in the seventh grade I went through an I need to look cool phase and one time I saved up quite a bit of money So me and my mom went on a shopping spree at Kohl's hashtag not sponsored I was going to impress everyone. I was going to look so cool with my brand new two pairs of jeans oh, yes. I'll get this normal blue pair and then the exact same pair just in case I spill ketchup on the first pair Yay! That's another reason why I'm pro have your kids pay for their own clothes So that way they learn how expensive clothes shopping is Seriously, two pairs of jeans was $70. Do you know how many Pokemon cards I could have bought? Probably enough to make my own pair of Poke Pants. And that's when I learned about the magical land of Goodwill. At Goodwill, you could buy mediocre, questionably stained looking jeans for a fourth of the price of Kohl's. And since I had to buy all my clothes and I was unemployed, I was at Goodwill every other Saturday for that half off deal. You're at Goodwill and everything's half off. That's like a double sale, people. I'm a supporter of Goodwill and thrift stores, absolutely. I'm really curious. Goodwill and thrift stores are great, and I like giving old clothes of mine to thrift stores. So far, this is the most that I've like questioned James's judgment. Like, where did you get the money to buy clothes as a like child? I don't understand. I agree that buying expensive clothes is unnecessary, and it can be really silly if you are not like well within your means to do so. Like, I don't buy expensive clothes, really. This this shirt was probably 20 bucks. But yeah, I don't know. I just, it's interesting. Here's the thing. Typically, clothes stores have a certain style they specialize in. Tilly's, you know you're gonna get that hip LA style clothes. At Old Navy, you know you're gonna get that white boy, white boy Ohio look. And H&M, you know you're gonna get demonetized. But when you what? step inside your local Goodwill, you don't know what you're getting. You get every style of clothing all in one place. True. I got my favorite t-shirt from Goodwill. True. I even wore it to this panel at VidCon. You know, the panel where I didn't even talk into the microphone, so you couldn't hear half the word they said. Ah, but James, I don't want to wear clothes that have already been worn by other people. They are gross. Ugh, cuties and herpes. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true, that's true. You don't know who else has worn your clothing, but then again, you could be wearing something that was also worn by Justin Bieber. Out. Could you imagine you buy a, a new shirt, your new favorite shirt, and then you find out after the fact, oh my gosh, this was owned by Justin Bieber. <laughs> Here's the problem. That's never gonna happen because Justin has said in an interview that he doesn't wash his clothes, he throws them away. At least he does that with underwear. I can't imagine what he does with other clothes, which I think is wrong. This is actually a good advice to any any of you guys. If you have old clothes that you don't want any anymore, if they're still wearable, yeah, donate them. Please don't throw them in the trash. That is such a waste. Yeah, that's right. I donate my clothes to Goodwill. Reduce, reuse, recycle, baby. Yeah. Why would someone make a pair of pants out of Pokemon cards and give it away. I'm not <laughs> saying don't buy expensive clothing. Buy whatever you want to buy and can't afford. If there's two shirts, one is $40 and one is $5, and you really, really like the $40 shirt and hate the $5 one, you should get the $40 shirt because you'll end up wearing it more often. So you get True. more use out of it. In economics, there's a term used to measure how much happiness a product will Utility. Give you, and it's called utils. Utils? <laughs> Utility. Bro, I, I was like, I'm gonna sound smart for half a second here. I literally went to business school for four years. I didn't learn much, but one thing I learned 
was what utility was. And now James is gonna come and change the word. James, you're killing me on this. Utils, am I tripping? Is this an American term? Cause I went to Canadian business school. Utils, hypothetical unit measuring satisfaction. I guess that's like a more specialized version of utility. Cause utility is how much is value you get out of something, not economically, but it can, it can apply to so many things. But I guess it means satisfaction. Oh, James, I, you almost made me feel smart. It feels bad. Sometimes buying more expensive things will give you more utils of happiness, so it's worth it to buy expensive clothing. But for me, I get way more oodles buying a shirt for $5. You cannot put a price on all the oodles and oodles of oodles I get for wearing a oh, shirt yeah. I like for $5. You can wear your Supremes and your Ambercrombos or whatever all you want. I just don't think it makes a lot of sense spending that much money on a white t-shirt with an ironed on logo. There's no True. material in that shirt that makes it as expensive as it is. True. Oh, never mind. <laughs> True. <laughs> That was good. That is true. That is true. See, that's why, listen, I own a couple designer things here and there, but I have no desire to buy like a shirt from a designer. Cause that seems just unnecessary. Like for example, I wear these Gucci flippy floppersons around my house all day, every day. These have already gotten thousands of hours of use and these cost less than a sweater from Gucci. It costs like literally like a fifth of the cost of a sweater from Gucci. So like the sweater, you're not gonna wear that every day, right? It's not gonna just become your identity. You can only wear it like once every couple weeks or something, but like you're not gonna get the same usage out of it. Like to me, yeah, that I do think that's silly. Unless you are just making unfathomable amounts of money, then do what you want as long as you're comfortable. What you're really doing is paying for the name brand. So you might as well staple two $20 bills to your mm -hmm. shirt and write in Sharpie, look everyone, I got $40. <sighs> but again, if you like the design of a white shirt and a red rectangle, then you be happy wearing it. I'm not telling you what to wear, but I will tell you this, don't judge someone based on their clothing. That's like the most shallow yeah. thing a person can do. Even if someone is wearing old hand-me-downs or a really expensive name brand t-shirt, don't treat people differently because of their clothing. Yeah. There's a certain YouTuber going around, I'm not gonna say any names, mm -hmm. but I will draw pictures, who's teaching kids that their value as a person uh, is correlated to the amount of money they spend on clothing. Oh, he's calling him out! Ah! Listen, I'm pretty sure I know exactly who James is talking about here. I know exactly who he's talking about because this was five years ago. I totally know, but I'm not going to get into it because this person happens to have had like a really, really hard few months. If it were like years ago and this was still happening, yeah, I'd jump in with you, James. I'm on your team, but right now I'm not going to get involved. Okay, real talk over now. School uniforms. People who support school uniforms say that uniforms are better because then the students don't have to think about what they're going to wear the next day Fair. because everyone has to wear the same outfit. Fair. But like, I already don't think about what I'm wearing. <laughs> that's probably why I'm naked right now. Okay, that's not entirely true. I'm not just going to walk outside wearing a, I don't know, a pink poncho. I have <laughs> oh my gosh, he, well, <laughs> I'm not going to say any names, says James. There's a certain YouTuber, says James. And then just rip off the band-aid. Yep, yeah, no subtlety anymore. Okay, okay. I have standards. I just buy all the cheap clothing I think looks nice. In high school, I mostly wore solid color v-neck t-shirts. And one time a kid on the very last day of school told me, James, you always wear solid color v-neck t-shirts. You're like a cartoon character. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. I've <laughs> always wanted to be a cartoon. I don't think you realize how much I love cartoons. There are some YouTubers who have like a costume, like a uniform, like they wear the exact same shirt all the time. And I think that can be really good for building an audience and building a brand or whatever. But I do think in the long term, it gets kind of boring and like you're not gonna keep that up forever. And if you do, if you wear the same thing in like every video for like 15 years straight, you 
kind of just always look the same. I feel like you could kind of lose people. And I don't mean that in a shallow way of like, oh, they're not getting any new clothes. I'm just strictly talking like, you want things to evolve, you know? I feel like I'm talking way too much. Am I talking way too much? I am sorry. One time I bought those shoes with the really fat tongues. I thought Whoa. they looked cool, but they certainly didn't feel cool. They didn't have any support for my soul. I couldn't go running in them, so what was They're even the pain. point? And apparently you're not supposed to tie the laces of those shoes. Oh I'm not gosh. sure. Someone just told me, hey man, you know you're not supposed to tie the laces of those shoes, uh, right? So I had to bury the laces inside my shoe, yep. and I was constantly stepping on the yep. sharp aglets. Ah, relatable. <laughs> Yo, James, go off. Go off, my king. Get him, James. Constantly stepping on the sharp aglets. Get him, James. James. Yeah, I never wore the long tongue shoes, but those always seemed insane. I did wear like super loose skate shoes when I was younger where I didn't tie the laces, but I guess not super loose. Just, this is actually crazy now that I think about it. When I was in like grade eight, I did wear shoes where if I flicked my foot right, I could just launch that shoe across the field. It's enough where I know how to hold my feet to run and to walk, but there's a certain kick I can do where that thing's going flying. And I would never do that now. That is so undesirable. No offense, adults who do this, but I don't understand the point of choosing a shoe that barely stays on your feet and it's a chore to keep on your foot for the sake of fashion. Listen, if you're wearing flip-flops or whatever, that's a totally different thing. But if you buy full shoes that have laces and look like a normal shoe that should stay on your feet, but it doesn't stay on your feet easily, like it's a job to keep keep it on. Like to me, that's crazy, dude. That's crazy. <laughs> also people, if you haven't done it yet, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to James's channel. He's the one who did all the hard work on these videos. I'm just out here running my mouth. And also if you haven't done this, if you could boop the like button on this video, that would make me happy. It would help support me and doing what I'm doing. And if you're watching the video and you're not subscribed, that would also be really cool. I would appreciate it. So I had to bury the laces inside my shoe and I was constantly stepping on the sharp aglets. aglets. <laughs> and all the cool kids saw my shoes and said, Hey, James, those are some pretty fat tongues you got there. Not as fat as your- sit at our lunch table? And I said, no, being cool sucks. <laughs> so now I wear tennis shoes everywhere. Some of you watching are in seventh or eighth grade right now, and you might be going through your own, I need to look cool thing. <laughs> and I just want to say to you little youngins, you don't need to impress or prove yourself to anyone. Aww. Wear whatever makes you happy and that you can afford. And you still have to follow the school's dress code, which is a whole other can of worms. I'm not encouraging anyone to break the rules, okay? All I'm saying is, at the end of the day, what really matters is that uh -oh. you're in seventh grade. Nothing you do will make you cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. Everyone regrets seventh grade, okay? Just Get start him! Doing deodorant, do the homework. You'll get through this. Get him, James. Oh, there's nothing I love more than a surprise savage moment. That is totally true. I mean, yeah, don't worry about how other people perceive you. I have obviously gone through like my own phases of, yeah, getting made fun of and like certain people. I mean, to this day as an adult, there are a lot of adults who look at me and they're like, ugh, like look at that. You know, <laughs> there are adults who judge me for the way I look, obviously. I mean, there's kids all the- I have YouTube comments. I always get judged for the way I look, but I don't care because to me and to the people who are like me, I think I look cool, which I know is like a cringy thing to say, but I like how I look and I like that I have my own style. I feel like I have my own style and I'm not doing it to like impress specific people, but I feel more like me when I'm dressed like me. And that's all you need to worry about if that even matters to you. Just feel like yourself, literally be yourself. It's that simple. Holy shit, it's 2002. <laughs> <laughs> what, what screamo band are you in? What a random thing to do. Oh, what is this picture? RAR XD, that's what it is. <laughs> Anyways, that was a fun one. I had no idea what this video was going to be like. I thought it was gonna be like, you're ever in the aisle of a shirt store and the cashier comes up to you and says, hey, you look like you should wear pants on your head. Like, I thought it was gonna be, like, shopping stories. That totally was not how I expected that to go, but it was really good. Also, it, this feels like as good a time as any. I currently have shirts. The dumbest shirt of all time. If you guys want to talk about not caring what people think about what you wear, there couldn't be a more I don't care what you think about what I wear shirt than this. I promise I'm gonna put out shirts that actually look good soon, but for now, we're gonna keep this in the store for a little bit longer. So if you want to get that 
shirt while it still exists. RobertIDK.net. Go pick it up. And yeah, that shirt will forever be a, an iconic shirt, I think. Now, this one I'm very, very excited for. Growing Up Without Cable, which is kind of a hilarious title because it's a title that you have to be like at least in your 20s to really feel and understand. Because who even uses cable anymore? <laughs> cable at this point is outdated because your phone can do so much. Like you definitely don't need cable to be a lazy screen addicted person <laughs> like myself. But anyways, if you don't understand what he's talking about, if you're maybe very young, cable was what you had on TV. It was the channels. If you wanted to watch cartoons before the odd ones out, you had to turn on your TV and you, if you had cable, you could go through the different channels and watch. But if you didn't have cable, it's just like a world that you didn't have. And instead you had to just be creative in other ways because the TV wasn't going to do it for you. So anyways, I'm really interested to see this one. Let's go people. Tres, dos, ichi. Imagine if Netflix, YouTube, and Hulu never existed. <laughs> what would you be watching right now? Would you be watching this? I don't think so. You'd be watching this box right here. A television? Mm -hmm. On this device, instead of picking what you wanted to watch and when you wanted to watch it, right. the television would decide all that for you. And instead of watching a single five-second skippable ad in the oh. beginning, you'd have to watch five 30-second long unskippable ads. But right. not just once, though. Like, every eight minutes, you'd have to watch, like, five 30-second non-skippable ads. Oh, what a morning. Why are these things always so early? I'm starving. No time for breakfast. What do you expect? You're going to be hungry, of course. What's this? A Kellogg's Nutri-Brain Bar. Isn't this for health nuts? I mean, am I going to like it? That's the question. Delicious crust with fruit filling without preservatives, and it's mm. even low in fat. Apple cinnamon. I love it. But of course, it's from Kellogg. They do cereal. They do breakfast. It all tastes great. Shut Mr. up! Shut up! Shut up! You know, like I used to be bothered when I saw YouTubers putting like an unnecessary amount of ads on their videos, but I did kind of realize like it's still way less than we have to watch if, if we watch cable or regular TV. At the same time, if you put like an ad every minute, you're a psychopath and a bad person. <laughs> Show your audience some respect. Can you think of anything more annoying? An advertisement right in the middle of your show? I don't know if my parents were being cheap or trying to discourage an unhealthy habit of watching too much TV, but growing up, my parents didn't have cable television at all in the house. Now, in this modern day and age of online content, some of you are living perfectly content lives without cable. Yeah. I know I am. But you have to understand, in the early 2000s, online video wasn't a thing. Yeah, YouTube was created in 2005, but what did that have? Oh. Let me soak that in real quick. Guys, the old YouTube homepage with the embed link, the ugly embed link right there, but this is where the channel was, the sub button, you, the banner right there. Ah, guys, I hope you know, I posted videos in 2006, not as me, I didn't film myself, but I edited videos since then. And so I posted like meme videos on YouTube since like 2006. And so this is like a real thing for me. Like I was using YouTube all day, every day when it looked like this. And I was posting on it too. Talk about longevity. How have I spent the last like 16 years of my life making YouTube videos and I haven't gone insane? At no point have I ever ever gone remotely insane and become a crazy person who has crazy thoughts and feelings. That's never happened to me. Okay, I think you get the joke now. Yeah, YouTube was created in 2005, but what did that have? This guy at a zoo? That's lame. <laughs> so being an early 2000s kid, you had to get your cartoons through the TV. And if your parents didn't pay $65 a month to get cable, then you didn't get the channels with SpongeBob, Jimmy no, Neutron, or no. Courage the Cowardly Dog. The only thing you got was this green brother and sister called PBS Kids. Oh, and true. whatever these things were. PBS Kids stands for Public Broadcasting Service. Kids. <laughs> oh, I understand now. How do I understand this now? That just blew my mind. PBS is public broadcasting, and that's why it's called PBS, and that's why you can, it's channel two, and you can get it without cable. 
Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm just getting this. I can't believe it. I had no idea. I had no idea. James, you just blew my mind, bro. I just thought PBS was just a company. I thought PBS was just a company, just like CTV, CNN, whatever. I, just, I thought PBS was just its own thing. I can't believe this. Incredible. That meant all the shows on PBS Kids were government or privately funded. So the shows on PBS didn't really have any commercials per se, but they did have the same sponsorship ads that would play a message before every show. If you grew up on PBS Kids, then Juicy Juice and Where a Kid Can Be a Kid is just engraved in your memory. And also, no, every show would I'm thank Canadian. you, the viewer, for watching. And I think that's really nice. So, everyone watching this, you're welcome. <laughs> No, James. The commercials he's referring to, we didn't have in Canada. There is funny how there's little things where, like, for the most part, Canada and the States culturally are very similar. And we see a lot of the same shows. But then there's always just, like, a few random shows that the other country has never heard of. Like, there were so many Canadian cartoons. Like, Carl Squared. Whack. <laughs> whack show. I'm sorry. Whack. Here we go, people. One night I was in my room. I swear that song sounded so much better in my head. I remember that sounding so much better. I I remember the song. I remember that ear bleeding melody. <laughs> I'm stuck with again. But I did not remember it sounding so. I was like, that sounded so clean in my head. We gotta hit that one more time. Carl squared. Carl Square. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm blowing my own mind right now. That was just one show. There were a lot of shows that were just in Canada. I'm kind of glad my parents didn't buy cable. Because instead of spending hours of my time watching mindless television, I spent hours of my time watching television with morals. <laughs> and math. <laughs> yep, a lot of shows on PBS were either educational or taught you how to be a good person. The shows I'm nice. gonna mention had pretty crazy concepts, but the conflicts in each episode were very down-to-earth and slice of life -y, almost like the shows were made for children. Like in Clifford Whoa. the Big Red Dog. It's a show about this girl's dog who grew up to be the size of a freaking house for no reason except for the fact that the girl loved the dog so much <laughs> that he grew up to be a monster. So that means if your dog is normal sized, you don't love it enough. <laughs> it probably doesn't love you. Yeah, <laughs> Clifford is so ridiculous. The concept is so crazy. Yeah, a giant red dog is a pretty weird premise, but the episodes were about everyday things. Like this blue dog feels bad that he tore up his owner's sweater, and his friends tell him to just be honest, and he does, and everyone's happy. Or the episode Aww. where this new dog moves into town, but he's missing a leg, and then Clifford and his friends have to learn that having three legs still means you can accomplish a lot of things any normal. Aww human can do. I mean, dog. And I rate this show a 10 out of 10. Wow, 10 out of, whoa, that's brave. Colin Clifford a 10, that's brave. I hate Clifford the Big Red Dog. I hate him. There's 50 books about Clifford the Big Red Dog. 50 books. There's seven books about Narnia that cover the birth and death of a nation and mice with swords and a lion who's a god. They did it in seven books. 50 books about Clifford, the big red dog. And they all tell the exact same story. Look how big this dog is. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Look how big this dog is. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> James is, is definitely making it sound like there's a uh, more of a plot to it than that, but <laughs> I'll take both explanations. I will take both. I'm good with either. Next is Dragon Tales, the show that Dragon made dragons Tales, Dragon friendly. Tales. There's Org, he's the biggest, not so brave of heart. There's Cassie, she's so shy but so very smart. There's Zack and Wheezy and their tales of fun, cause you know two heads are better than one. Dragon Tales, Dragon Tales, it's almost time for Dragon Tales. The show was pretty simple 
similar to Clifford, the characters would spend an episode learning everyday things like how to do a cartwheel, or they would try to make it rain so they could show their friend what a rainbow looks like. Whoa. There was also this grandpa dragon who knew Spanish for some reason. Don't come too close, niños. And that wasn't the weirdest thing on the show, actually. There was also a dragon character in a wheelchair. Which, just like Clifford, really? is a good character because it teaches kids that disabled people are still people who can accomplish a lot of things. But I think it's a weird combination the of dragon, two yeah. things. A dragon, a mythical beast known for destroying cities <laughs> in a wheelchair. <laughs> if you wanted to stop a dragon from destroying your city, then you just don't install wheelchair ramps anymore. <laughs> I should stop talking. I rate the show a 10 out of 10. Another 10! That was hysterical. Okay, that was hysterical. That was really funny. First of all, dragon tales, dragon tales. Wait, I gotta sing along to the actual thing. Oh my gosh, this has 13 million views? And he wished on the dragon scale. And that's what started dragon tales. Around the room the dragons flew. But Eddie Let's go. And knew what to do. They climbed on the backs of the dragon friends. Now the adventures never end. Dragon tales, dragon tales. It's almost time for dragon tales. Come along, take my hand. Let's all go to Dragon Land. Oh my gosh. The theme song was better than the show, bro. It was better than the show. I hated that show. I thought it, I thought it was so boring. Now let's talk about Arthur. Here's okay. some fun trivia. Arthur is supposed to be an aardvark. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't see it. Basically, <laughs> it was a show about Arthur and his other furry friends learning lessons, but Arthur tended to tackle more serious subjects than the other two shows. True. Like, they have episodes where DW hears her parents get in a fight and she worries about them getting a divorce, Ooh. or the episode where Arthur Falcon punches his little sister, and even having to deal with someone you know getting cancer. What? Cancer? The character gets treatment and lives, by the way. Because it's a kid's show. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10! Okay, James. I'm not gonna go on a 20-minute spiel after every single show. I guess PBS shows, I just found them boring. Like, SpongeBob is my favorite childhood show of all time. Any Anything after season three does not exist to me. It's dead to me, okay? Just let's clarify that before I talk about SpongeBob. Anything after season three, no. Get that out of my sight. The first three seasons are as good and funny and entertaining as a kid's cartoon can possibly be. That is why you still see memes and references from from those seasons to this day you're not gonna ever see me put in a meme from the new seasons it's not gonna happen but anyways my point is to me that's a 10 out of 10 show as a kid i i had too much imagination i was bored with the other shows i couldn't really get into them like the ones with like morals and like just long conversation i don't know <laughs> next let's talk about my favorite show on pbs kids whoa cyber chase whoa cyber chase we're moving we're beating <laughs> At his game. Game. Don't come in every letter. Never heard of it. Oh, well, can't can't get every time. This show didn't teach kids morals or how to properly treat the disabled. It taught them something far more important. Math? Math. <laughs> Cyber Chase is set inside a virtual computer world, and this one character named Motherboard was supposed to be the queen slash protector of this world, but she sucks at her job because the villain of the show, Christopher Lloyd, infects her with a virus. So now these three kids have to go on adventures using math principles to thwart the bad guy's plans to save Mommy Board. M motherboard? Oh my M motherboard. gosh. M mommy. Mom, come back. Mommy in the house. <laughs> we to save Mommy Board. <laughs> Alright, that was bizarre. <laughs> That was, that was, that was something. <laughs> and unlike all the other shows, this show had an overarching story. Ooh. The kids would always get this close to saving Motherboard, but nothing they did worked. When I was a kid, I always wondered how much longer it would be until they finally <laughs> saved her. And they never did. The show's no. been going on for 16 years. No! And they're still learning new math principles, trying to save Motherboard. I think they're at calculus at this point. That's so crazy. Yeah, because you do think about that as a kid, where it's like, these characters, they're working really hard and they're getting close to accomplishing their goal. Surely, they're gonna just accomplish their goal and then the show just ends, right? But as an adult, I think, no, the show's doing well. They're gonna write it so that they are just not accomplishing their goal. They gotta just keep going for 10 more years. 
That's kind of insane. Like, dude, kids have grown up to be adults. They don't even care if they accomplish it anymore. And you still aren't making it happen. Like, nobody has been watching whatever show this is. Nobody's been watching it since from, like, when they were 8 to 24. Those people don't exist. You're leaving generations of people on the hook here. And that's mean. The show is teaching you slower than an actual school. What kind of a show <laughs> makes you wait 16 years for a conclusion? Cyber Chase does, and it's one of the best shows ever created. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. <sighs> one last show I want to bring up is called Caillou. All you need oh. to know about Caillou is that I hate him. Caillou is a four-year-old and a demon. He constantly throws a tantrum whenever he doesn't get his way. Even in his theme song, he mentions how much of a brat he is. Growing up is not so tough, except when I've had, had enough. enough. And then he's crying like a child. Well, you're gonna have to grow up, <laughs> Caillou. The world doesn't revolve around you. Now you might be Get thinking, him, James! He's four years old, of course he's gonna be a brat. And I agree, but a big problem with Caillou isn't the fact that he's a brat, but it's with his spineless parents. Oh no. Caillou's mom just lets him get away with everything. Whenever I misbehaved, you know what happened to me? I had to go sit in the timeout corner. You know what happens to Caillou? Nothing! 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 I think most adults agree that Caillou is a little brat. As soon as I became like not a like toddler, I was like, man, I don't like Caillou. He, he annoys me. Like he's like a rude, annoying, whiny child. After the age of like three, I just stopped resonating with that at all. And I feel like that's one of the first like childhood main characters that I just kind of threw away. Cause it's like you value the people and the characters from your childhood and you don't want to like grow up and think that they are the worst. But Caillou, I, I don't claim Caillou. I'm not a Caillou apologist. I had to go sit in the timeout corner. You know what happens to Caillou? Nothing! Uh, nothing! nothing! Does Caillou ever get punished? It's always his mom just being like, Caillou, what you said wasn't very nice. Now go behave, okay? Zero out of 10 with the show with just the humans. I hate it. I just realized <laughs> that all the shows I mentioned were animated, but there was a lot of non-animated shows that I still watched. But whatever, I could just say that these shows fit the theme of my channel. Or it could make a part two, I can do whatever I want. This is another video where it's totally not what I thought it was gonna be. When he was saying like growing up without cable, I thought he was gonna talk about like he had to go outside more and have all these adventures. But no, he's just talking about still watching TV just without a cable box. That's so crazy to me. He's constantly throwing these curveballs at me. Now, as a diehard PBS fanboy, I think I speak for everyone when I say that what PBS was missing was a crossover episode. How hard would it have been for the Clifford people and the Dragon Tales people to coordinate an episode where the three-legged dog finds the dragon scale, he could dig Whoa. it up out of the sand because dogs like to dig, except this dog wouldn't be that good at digging. And then he would meet up with a wheelchair dragon and they could be best friends. Aww. I would have loved that. As much as I'm joking about it, as a kid, I actually really wanted a crossover episode between the shows Clifford and Clifford's Puppy Days. What? Which is another show that follows Clifford before he was interesting, when he was tiny, <laughs> so before Emily Elizabeth loved him. So there was a bunch <laughs> of new characters that all knew Clifford when he was little, and the two shows existed in the same universe, so it wouldn't have been that unbelievable for Clifford to visit his Time child travel. Home. And then all the other characters who used to call him small or squirt would see him now and be like, Wow! What? What the f happened to you? <laughs> you see, it's funny because it's a kid's show and you wouldn't expect them to say that. That's hilarious. Wait, are you saying it's the same dog but older? Are you saying that he needs to time travel or did he say something I'm missing? Cameron, I'm sure if he did, you're gonna point it out real quick. Yes, yes I will. So it wouldn't have been that unbelievable for Clifford to visit his childhood home. Visit his childhood home. But hey, it's not much to ask for a crossover episode between shows, but it is asking a lot to make the characters travel through time. That is a, a little much, James. I waited patiently for that crossover episode, but it never came. That's sad. But at least I have fan fiction. George, he wagged his tail and smiled. Clifford, it's so good to see you. He <laughs> nuzzled him as a greeting. Nice to see you too. It's been over seven years since I last saw you. Yeah, it had, Clifford said happily. George turned his back to the hill. Here I come. No quotation marks, by the way. He got ready to tackle him. He punched George off, and they rolled down. Then, when they got to the bottom, 
George pinned Clifford, who was panting. Who was who the three wrote looked this? Looked at the two of them, who seemed to be having a staring contest. So they decided to go they somewhere else. Both laughed, and Clifford got off of him. He sat down and waited for George to stand up. So, what are we gonna do? The red dog said while quickly getting into a playing position. Oh okay, that's enough. Well, okay, well, that's a minute of my life I'm never gonna get back. All right. I, uh, what did I just watch? What was that? Anything I was planning on saying to sum up that video has now left my mind because of that in ending. Anyways, the video as a whole was great. Again, not at all what I expected. And also most of those shows, I kind of didn't like. I kind of thought they were boring. But I appreciate James's experience. What are your childhood TV shows or what were your childhood TV shows? Why don't you let me know in the comments? Because that interests me. Another couple of classics. People, here is James's channel. Make sure you have checked it out. Here's the full playlist of times we've looked at the odd ones out. If you're missing any of these videos from your watch history, make sure you fill it in. Or here's a video that YouTube thinks you will like. Are they right? You let me know. People, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I love you and goodbye.